Thanks, Matthias. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah, it wasn't 120, but about 110, so we go on. Um, 218 to 3.4, that's it. You need to disinstall your 218. It's not support anymore, as Andreas said. It's really time to move on. 3.4 is great. This presentation is going to focus only on 3.4, and at the end, I have three slides that have all the features about 3.6, 3.8, and I didn't even look at 3.10 because it's just impossible. We've been uh, producing a lot of great stuff. So uh, let's start. Um, first thing, uh, user profiles. You can now define different profiles. So um, you can say when I'm teaching, when I'm doing analysis, there's going to be different uh, toolbars that show on and show off, plugins, etc. Everything just will change depending on the profile that you're using. New UI teams, and sorry for speaking really quickly, but I do have 40 slides. Uh, <laughs> night mapping, so dark for people that like doing work in the evening. Uh, and blend of gray, that's only starting from 3.6. I always added a little, little sign when it's 3.6 only. UI improvements. Um, we used to have opacity, transparency, and uh, other names probably for the same thing. Now we try to um, get everything coherent. Uh, we now call everything opacity. And all across the board, we've been reusing the same UI hints, the same UI tools, and um, so that the, your user experience is actually much nicer and much more coherent, so that you know that when you're going to set that slider to 100%, it means the same thing, and it's not the opposite thing as it used to be. Um, we work on maps. So um, we wanted to, to give you the possibility to have um, um, a lot of map on your screen. So now you can, with Control tab you can hide and show all panels. With Control shift tab you can hide or show the complete GUI. So really nice when, when you maybe just quickly need to have a look at a bigger map. You can just turn off everything and then turn it on again and keep on working on whatever you were looking at. Multiple map views, um, something that um, has been wished for a long time, um, landed in 3.4 as well. So now you can have multiple maps um, that are completely independent from each other or that are connected to each other. So um, you, can, you can have the center move together, you can have the center not move together and have different views on the map. You can have a 3D view on the side and have another um, flat and one with orthophotos and you can change style on each of the different um, of the different uh, maps. So you can have um, each canvas has its own reference system. So it's pretty powerful to, to look at data from different angles at the same time. Locator bar, um, we added uh, the bottom left or by control key, or control K, depending on, on what the what action you use. Uh, it's a bar where you can type in things and it finds things in, in, uh, in QGIS for you. It can find uh, processing tools, it can find information in layers, it can find feature, it can find actions, it can be calculator, and it can be extended by um, plugins. So for example, there is a Swiss locator provider where you can type in there and it will ask the Swiss um, uh, national data portal for information, and you will get the information back. It's a Python plugin, so anybody can can quickly build up their own uh, locator plugin, and just in, uh, distribute it and have it have their users install it and uh, and have very quick access to to multiple locators. We added, um, as in the locator I mentioned, uh, was written, um, we have autocomplete. Um, many search, or basically everywhere the search box is now autocomplete. We do have search boxes uh, so that it makes it easier to find things. Meanwhile, we have a lot of settings, a lot of information. So at times, it is just much easier to just go to the properties, to the layer properties um, form, and, uh, and just search for whatever I'm looking for, CRS or uh, plugin manager or so on. So much, much, much quicker to get whatever we are looking for there. Um, data sources. Um, we have a unified data source window where we can actually just 
load data, everything is in the same place when I, I can say load data and uh, I get to this window and from here on I can, um, I can say, well, okay, uh, what am I gonna be, um, what I'm gonna be loading, is it gonna be a raster, is it gonna be a Postgres, and from here on I can go on and decide, browse my data, or browse services, and so on, and it's all kind of together in this uh, effort that we had in um, making the whole thing coherent, so you don't have 15 different dialogues that uh, speak to you um, with different like a different style which makes the whole thing um, a little less professional than, than what QGIS actually is in the background. Um, something I love, because I never know if I'm using a projection that is, is nice for the data that I have. Um, when, you, when you choose a projection uh, for your data, you can click on the projection and um, it will show you in, the little, in a little map for what kind of area that projection is actually supposed to be supposed to be used or good for? Uh, really handy, really quick. It's just there. It it's it doesn't disturb if you don't want to use it. But uh, if if you're unsure, then it's uh, it's something really really handy. The other favorite of mine, it's um, obviously that uh, we are um, leading a campaign. Um, where we're not really sure if we're against or we love, but we most certainly didn't put a heart there. Um, shapefiles, <coughs> well, let's not get in there. Um, they have issues and uh, we remove them as default data type. So everything that you do now by default will use a geo package, which means the geo package has become the, the first, first class citizen in, in QGIS, shapefiles, obviously, the support is still great uh, and amazing as it was uh, with the limitation that shapefile has. But, uh, but yeah, um, now the processing and everything will just generate uh, geo packages by default. Project translations. Uh, Many countries that are multilingual, many projects that need to be in multiple languages. Um, in Switzerland, for us, it's a kind of a super common thing. Um, basically, you can now build up a project in one language and then just have a trans translation file to the project so that you can do all the cartographical things in, in, in one project and then you just go and translate, as you can see here, just uh, in the database, you will end up having uh, Buckfast Bee or Carniolan Honey Bee, but actually you can have a translation file where the user entering the data will see the German or the Japanese or whatever naming um, convention they, they have on their system. So the, the whole cartographical, the whole setup, uh, database connection and everything is one project, your main language, and then you can just have translation files for it, which is uh, very, very handy if you need to work in multiple languages. Um, wasn't sure to, if to leave this in or not. Uh, JSON, uh, you can now display JSON data in a nice, uh, in a nice uh, key value map um, widget. Something super, 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 super important, um, processing. So processing used to be a Python plugin to QGIS. It has now been um, fully rewritten in C++. The API has been cleaned up a lot. Um, and the algorithm that used to be in Python have now been rewritten in, uh, as native C++ algorithms, which means they've been optimized and in the process, and obviously just by the fact that they are in C++, they run faster. And the other great thing is that uh, they do run in background now. So whenever you're running analysis uh, in processing, is just running, if you have a multi-core machine, um, well, you still have uh, the other core, uh, one core at least, um, to, to deal and uh, with, with your project, uh, your user interface is not gonna get locked and you can just, uh, you can just work much, much more smoother. It also has a better documentation. During the, um, the um, port to C++, the, the occasion was used to improve the documentation 
of the whole thing. So um, it's really it's getting really even much nicer to work on now on the um, on the processing. Whenever you you choose whatever, um, for example, here the clip, uh, you get the documentation directly in the window on the site. Processing toolbox is um, where all the the tools that are available as a processing. Uh, can be found. You can see that we have some native QGIS algorithms, the one with the nice logo in front, and then we can have uh, external ones that uh, depend on whatever your system has installed. GDAL you always have, GRASS you most commonly have, and then uh, Saga can be, and then we have scripts and models. Um, script and models are um, so let's go models first. Models are kind of multiple step um, kind of um, things that can combine different algorithms after each other, um, and you can do all that in a in a graphical tool. And scripts are kind of equivalent, but you are typing Python. Currently, uh, since 3.6, we can again uh, export. Um, models to Python scripts. And whenever you save them to the toolbox, you'll see them in here. Here, I don't have any. An example of, um, of a nice new, new um, algorithm that came into 3.24, not sure anymore, um, is the package layers, which will allow me to, to take different layers and in one go put them all in one geo package. Uh, Another cool new processing toolbox tool is uh, under vector creation. It's importing of um, a bunch of, of geotagged photos. If you have a, an, a folder that is full of geotagged pictures, you can just um, run this uh, import geotagged photos tool, and uh, and it will create a new table in your um, <coughs> in your geo database. Uh, Geo package, obviously, <laughs> and um, you can have um, them visualized. GIF, GIF don't work apparently, so easy custom labeling is a super nice feature where you can uh, now um, have your map uh, with labels, and um, the labeling can now be moved, and whatever position you put the labeling on. <coughs> Will uh, it will stay there? So it's stored with a file near the project, so you don't have to store in the data anymore um, coordinates for where you want your label to be. So it's it's pretty handy. It gets automatically placed. Editing improvement. Uh, we changed um, the way that um, you digitize and change. Um, um, polygons, we went to a kind of click, click thing. You can click between, you'll see here, if I want to add a new node, I can add, I can click and then I can just pull the new node so much faster. Uh, we improved a lot the CAD tools um, uh, with heaps of, of functionality, orthogonal digitizing, uh, digitizing at certain angles, parallel, parallel at a certain different distance. So it's really a lot of, uh, of new functionality in, uh, in, in there, tracing at offset, so you can trace a line that exists already and have it always at 10 meters, uh, create the next line. Um, in the editing tools announcement as well, uh, we can have multi-layer editing modes, meaning that you can have data from different layer move together. Um, the advanced digitizing part, um, is where we hidden all those more complex uh, kind of tools. Well, hidden, you just turn it on once and then, and then you have it there. Um, all this, uh, the snapping settings are now available in a toolbar by itself. Editing in place, um, processing tools can now edit uh, layers directly in place without needing to create a new layer uh, with the output. So doesn't keep on creating new layer, new layer, new layer for every new, uh, every new calculation that you do. Select feature by value. Um, well, 
pretty clear. You can now, in a, in a mask, you can type in values and it will select the features for you that match those kind of values. Another very interesting selection uh, thing that we have is that you can now use um, two different layers to select. Uh, so if you have a polygonal layer and you have a point layer, you can right click on a polygon and say, and select the things that are within that polygon. So really quick way to basically do a pointing polygon uh, algorithm. We have a point cluster renderer, uh, very handy when you have a lot of points. It will automatically render for you the correct amount, uh, the, the amount of point and showing you how many points uh, you're looking at. Then um, probably one of the most advanced thing that has been added is a QML widget. Uh, QML widget allows you to type uh, as programming, as very easy programming language called QML and create interactive things like these graphs. These are all generated on real time on the data depending on the, on the feature that just has been clicked. So it has, uh, you see here, hovering and re super powerful. Um, if you're interested in it, uh, on Friday afternoon at two o'clock, Bolero, you get a lot of information about that as well. Live layers, um, layers then layers that can uh, refresh themselves every certain amount of time, every second, every 10 seconds, um, can show you data that changes in the background. In 3.6, a raster image marker, uh, where you can place an image, uh, a raster as a marker, can be used for fancy thing like placing a picture and automatically showing in which direction the picture was taken by reading EXIF information. There's been a lot of new expressions, variables, and data-defined uh, things in the expression editor. Uh, print composer, uh, completely rewritten, can now have uh, multiple sheets per layout, different orientation, different size, on top of it, um, we can now create reports as well, meaning uh, that uh, you can go into data that depend on another uh, data. So you can go dig into like all the airports, you show a map of all the airport, and then you do a map for each airport. So pretty powerful there. Um, scale bars, all units have been introduced. Um, yeah, plenty, plenty, plenty of new things here. Uh, 3D, uh, extrusion of vector data and animations. Um, yeah, 3D has gotten a high priority in 3.0, so it's, it's, a, it's a super nice uh, new uh, functionality that we have, and it's a first, uh, first class citizen now. As I mentioned before, you can have a, a new map that has a 3D content. We can print, print 3D. Then we added the support for mesh data, um, used often for meteorological, hydrological, and so on. That, uh, there is a mesh calculator. It supports identifying features. And there is 3D support for, for the meta. Um, there is a project to allow you um, migrate much easy um, from uh, ArcGIS project to QGIS project. It is in beta, it is in fundraising, so it's called Slayer in case you want to help uh, fund that. Uh, basically, it's the quickest path to, to go to, to move your project from ArcGIS to QGIS. Obviously, QGIS is also a server. Um, in the 3.x series, the server was totally refactored, completely rewritten, services were modularized, is now a reference implementation for WMS. It is tested and compliant against the whole WMS test suite. And there's, gonna, there's been a lot of tests that have been added there, and there is um, compliance work. I'm not sure if it has finished yet. No, it has not finished yet. So there is compliance work for WFS and it has WMS support. That was all up to 3.4. So we have 3.8 and 3.10 to look at. We're not gonna look at it. Uh, these are just some highlights and uh, geometry generators for labeling, export of 3D animation, terrain from online sources, configuration of field, angle camera, HTML in the widget, 
save layers into GeoPackage, uh, generate raster's, resurrection on Orpheo toolbox, improved UI for the modeler, QGIS project can now be in GeoPackage files, ArcGIS Math server is handling is much improved, SQL server can now handle version two geometries and support for plugin dependencies. And this is the first slide of the two slides of <laughs> the old features. Um, the slides are gonna be online, so um, bear with me. I told you I had 110 slides, so I'm um, pretty happy I managed it in 19 minutes. That's the second one. So that's only 3.8, between 3.6 and 3.8, huh? You can go here and have a look at all the change logs and buy a book by Kurt, which is super good. I'm not making any money out of this, but it's a really good book um, on uh, the old new things on 3.0. Um, skip. Um, can I show this? Oop. On Friday um, at two o'clock, if you if you want to come uh, to Bolero and see some uh, some more entertaining, not like boring like this one where I just speak, speak, speak. Here we're going to show a lot of things about an hour and a half, uh, three blocks, two o'clock Bolero. We're going to tell you the story of uh, Maya, the beekeeper, uh, how she starts her business. Um, after retiring, and um, how she, she becomes a beekeeper and grows and grows and grows, and her GIS needs keep on growing. Um, yeah. Thanks a lot, and if you have any questions. <laughs>